this picture was taken in 2015. This was the first year that I bought the 6610. And my neighbors are helping bale hay this year. And my grandson is first time baling hay with the family and neighbors. But when I bought the tractor, there was also a loader that did not come with this tractor. It belonged to a, a, an Alice Chalmers. And it was it was affordable. I wish I had bought one that was a little bit bigger, but this one was affordable. And I altered it and um, cut it up into lengthen it and to beef it up. The arms on it, uh, the stand up arms are beefed up. It's got more of like tubing all the way around like a modern one and the arms they've been lengthened so that there's more distance there to fit the nose of the tractor and this was a, a video i made last summer of cutting it up and getting it ready and it's been an ongoing uh project for the last two almost three years now it's been hard to be able to have a job during the day and travel to the job site here in Indiana. It's been, you know, an hour, two hours one way sometimes to go to work, come back, feed the animals. But it, it's been a project to work on this, and I have enjoyed it. And there's going to be several videos coming up about it. Paper. Get it on there so that it does not move. Find your bolt holes, rub it with your finger around until you see it traced. There's a little trace mark there. Can't let the paper move around now. There it is. Okay, after finding the traced marks, you lay out centers. And what I'm going to do is punch a hole directly into each crosshair of the center marks. Here, and here, and here. And then I'm going to lay out this piece of steel. And put it in center and then punch those marks that are imprinted in here into place up there there we go using a whole gasket cutter cuts holes for gaskets so to find each center spot I could do it with a bigger one I don't have it this hole here is sufficient enough to lay it out at centers. Block of wood underneath it. Finding center. See, it's off just a little bit. Roll it over there. Keep checking both sides. Make sure it stays there. Then you're going to take a hammer and you're going to tap it and cut a hole in there. Cuts it just like a cookie cutter. Finish the rest of them. Okay, after you're done... With punching the holes out and laying this out center and center width and length now I got the lines on here as well and I got the soapstone marks laid down here now I will lay out the center mark here with soapstone and the center marks over here 
And this one's off a little bit. Let me just spin it. Like that. And you keep going until you line them all up. And that's where you're going to make your center punch marks for your drill bit holes. Okay, after drilling the small center punch holes, a pilot hole, now we're going to finish drilling out with a three quarter inch bit. That's the size of the bolt. And we want to put a sleeve over that and a bolt through it to line it up and drill a hole. Again, I don't have a drill bit on me that will be like an inch and an eighth. This drill press won't handle it. We're gonna grind it by hand and we're gonna bolt it up to the tractor and line it up. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that and tack weld it in place. That way it's perfectly lined up. There'll be a little bit of slop or gap in this when the sleeve goes through it. That way when the bolt tightens up to the tractor, the sleeve that's going to be welded to the inside of this piece of pipe won't allow this tubing to squeeze in. Now finish drilling. Okay. Got the holes drilled out, cleaned it off. What I'm going to do, I got these three quarter inch holes. I'm going to peg this down in here and I'm going to trace around this pipe as center as I can get it. And then that's where I'm going to grind to match that soapstone mark right there. So it's going to go all the way around. If I can find a drill bit, I'm going to try it. But right now I'm just marking and showing you if you don't have a drill bit. This is one method you can do. And I'm going to use a burr grinder or a die grinder. And grind that out to match those soapstone circles what I've done is I've made these sleeves they're gonna go up inside this tubing so that it doesn't crush the, the two by Five is what this is, tubing when I tighten it up. Right now I'm just fitting it up in there, making sure that it has no gap when it's tight to the belly of the transmission bell housing. zero gap this is a this is a lineup center pin it's bottomed out right now now what I'm going to do this is tightened up I'm going to take this down I'm going to tack weld that in place with the bolt in place at the same time do this though I need to take all the washers out the bolt lines up where it belongs and we'll line that up so it's flush and then I'll tack weld that
now we can grind down all those welds, both sides, flush. That way the bolts will seat flat on the bottom. This will also seat flat on the bottom of the transmission bell housing. And this will fit right perfectly into the center point. Okay, I've started the first bolt. Goes in there. Get the second one going. Now I've left the washers on. My plans are to shorten the bolt because I couldn't get an exact size bolt unless it was ordered. I got them out of local. Farm Supply Center. But as you can see, so it don't bottom out. This distance is what's going to have to be cut off. And I am going to use washers, at least two washers and a lock. I want a shoulder there to hold it, and these are heavy. So it'll only be four washers that are going to be cut. It's about a half inch. But it is secure, and there is no gap clearance, nothing. Like I said, I'll use lock washers on this. And now I'll be able to take measurements of where I want the side brackets to be mounted onto this bar, the belly bracket.